welcome to the third edition of uh, Invest Hao Tang. It's a series that looks at the different investment avenues uh, that the province has to offer. In today's episode, we will shift our focus to the automotive sector, a sector that has come to a standstill due to the global pandemic coronavirus. And according to service, uh, the automotive sector is facing revenue shortfalls. Let's take a look at what it means for the province. The South African car industry hard at work. This is the production line at Roslyn Car Plant near Pretoria, a so-called motor hub where components and cars are churned out every day. Car making is an important part of the South African economy. In 2019, the automotive sector contributed 6.9% to South Africa's GDP, 4.4% from manufacturing. South Africa exports vehicles and components to more than 155 international markets. Statistics show a 10% increase of new vehicle exports for 2019. Along the Northern Corridor, Gauteng has the largest concentration of automotive manufacturing with three original equipment manufacturers, or OEMs, and approximately 40% of the South African automotive components industry. According to the GGDA, the Automotive Industry Development Centre is at the forefront of innovation. It has an incubation facility, the first Gauteng Automotive Learning Center and an automotive enterprise hub. The idea is to train people to help the industry grow. OEMs like BMW South Africa have built the 3 Series since 1994 in Roslyn. BMW South Africa has since then announced its 6 billion rand investment in 2016 for a new body shop next to the existing plant. A sign of growth and BMW is not the only one. It's a fantastic uh, opportunity not only for Nissan in South Africa and Africa, but I think also for South Africa. So the investment in total is 3 billion rand, and it'll be for the Novara, which will go into full production. And amongst those investments, um, or, or the benefits, is that we will be creating a total of 1,200 jobs, 400 uh, directly in this plant, another 800 in the value chain. Um, to supply the new Navarra. In addition to that, we will launch at about 38% local content and very quickly get up to 48% with obviously our aspirations get close to the 60% targets. When Ford started this process in producing the Ranger locally, uh, we, they, there was quite a gentle ramp up, so starting from 10 vehicles a day, going to 20 vehicles a day, to 30, to 50, to 100. And during that process, we were replicating exactly what was happening within the, the, the Ford plant because the bulk of the components that we have within the facility are supplied jet into Ford onto the production line. And with the introduction of the, the, the 3 billion rand investment and the 100 and, or 1,200 jobs that they indicated, they are now going on a three-shift scenario, meaning that as an incubation center, in order to support the volume that's being produced at Ford, we also have to go on a three-shift scenario. So, so the, the direct implication on the, on the facility is that we have to upscale our, our headcount to ensure that we recruit a third shift, but also to ensure that the equipment that we have within the facility is uh, sufficient to provide and produce the additional components required for the third shift that Ford are introducing. The incubation centers look at a joint venture between a BEE company and an existing tier one company, a company that manufactures and supplies components to OEMs. The incubation centre trains these entrepreneurs and then relies on a technical partner to upskill them in a particular component. Nissan saw the opportunity to um, provide uh, jobs and, and also to get suppliers into the automotive industry. It's very difficult for a supplier to get into the automotive industry given all the um, guarantees that you have to have Globally, you have to be able to manage a recall, and that's pre predominantly the reason why we've um, gone into developing these incubation hubs, so that we give people the opportunity to become familiar with supplying into the automotive industry, so that they can actually take up an active role. Another part of AIDC, the learning centers, develop artisan skills. These centers in time formed a partnership between the centers and OEMs to help enhance trade and artisan development. 
We have partnered with a lot of the OEMs that um, basically supply us with some of the parts and components. So what the OEMs does is with all of the components that they actually have that's defective, we acquire these units and we would put it onto these work stands when we do our preparation training with the guys to say this is what will actually be uh, happening in reality with the vehicle. So your processes for actual fault tracing and diagnostics on the electrical system would be one, two, three. We're trying to create such opportunities for candidates to actually see the value that they will actually place within South Africa. We try to make it a little bit more lucrative for them to actually see the value that they will gain out of it. With more vehicles on our roads, demand for servicing increased. The Enterprise Hub in Winterfeld assists SMEs in townships to fill this gap in the market. As the flagship project, these enterprise hubs address skills shortages and socio-economic challenges. The ADC undertook the refurbishment of the building that you will see behind me now, right now. Uh, we did spend in the order of about 4 million rand in the refurbishment of the facility and extending it in order to make it uh, suitable to be an automotive hub, looking at panel beating and spray painting. This equipment that you see here is here to support the SMEs purely. It's here to develop their businesses, de develop their business acumen, and also make sure that they become economically active within the township of Winterfeld. This hub now gives some access uh, to these SMEs, access to world-class equipment, uh, mainstream market equipment that we've had to develop, as well as uh, access to equipment that would help grow the businesses of these SMEs. We have seen that the automotive industry does uh, give rise to uh, various levels of infrastructure, factories that need to pop up, uh, local content suppliers of components to supply into the value chain. Uh, and if you look at the industry itself, having a master plan going into 2035, where they want to increase production and increase local content, there's quite a significant amount of infrastructure that needs to be put in place to support that growth of the industry itself. Absolutely, an industry to be proud of without question is one of the most successful uh, programs that uh, the government has run post uh, the dawn of democracy in 1995. Now to join us and talk about uh, the uh, impact of the COVID-19 virus on this sector is uh, Lance Schultz, his Chief Executive Officer at uh, the Houting Automotive Industry Development Center. Lance, thanks uh, for joining us. I imagine like everybody else, you're watching what's happening with this uh, uh, virus and uh, you want what kind of an impact it will have uh, on uh, your industry. Can you just give us perhaps a top-line view in terms of what you've seen so far and also hopefully you see a silver lining of some kind? Good day firstly and uh, thanks for having me and uh, uh, thank you to uh, all of the viewers also. So pre-COVID we already saw some contraction in the sector. Of course that has been brought about due to the recessionary impact Fortunately, uh, we also export orientated, uh, so up to 64% of the vehicles actually get exported, earning us uh, foreign exchange or so, uh, which is very positive in the South African context. However, there is an expectation that there will be a 3% contraction for goods and services worldwide on the back of the COVID pandemic. Hmm. And South Africa being a relatively small player in terms of the domestic market, will have to have resilience and agility in terms of uh, responding to the, the get back uh, to work operations with uh, post-COVID plans coming in. Yeah. So what we have yeah. experienced is a, a significant uh, reduction in, in volumes. Uh, it in fact led to a complete cessation of the, the sector with the hard lockdown and the successive phases of the risk-adjusted strategy. So it is a sector that is going to rely on consolidation and uh, we also expect that there'll be a reduction of uh, market capitalization, yeah. but there is uh, opportunity in terms of that consolidation, which the sector would have to look at quite strongly. Absolutely, 100%. Has anyone come knocking on your door and saying, sir, uh, we are under stress here and we need to relook our plans? And also, I want to know from your perspective, if you have had to rethink some of your original plans. The ARDC has been requested to provide support to a number of SMEs during the pandemic. Uh, some of them are tenants in the park, and uh, we've been uh, requested to look at rental remissions. We've also had a number of SMEs that have approached us to, to get access to the various government grants that have been afforded. Uh, two of these is through the UIF and the Temporary, temporary Employee um, Relief Scheme. And... Uh, we have also been requested to, to assist with uh, a number of companies that were looking at, in fact, 
diversifying to the manufacture of PPE. So currently there are four companies uh, that are automotive related that are providing PPE and uh, we have been quite uh, encouraged with uh, the levels of manufacturing capability that the uh, automotive sector could quite easily replicate that skills in terms of quality and in terms of the desired standards for something that is needed quite uh, drastically in our country at this point in time. Uh, largely, the OEMs have also requested us to provide support. We understand that the sector is largely driven due to requirements to meet human capital needs. And to that extent, we've also provided support uh, in terms of the establishment of a hospital. Uh, various hospitals have been upgraded with the support of BMW and the German government. Added to that, we've also provided support in terms of COVID uh, compliance offices as well as testing and screening facilities that have been made available at the automotive supplier park. Hmm. So you have had to stand with the industry at a very difficult time, but you don't foresee uh, this in any way threatening the future of the industry because we know uh, the uh, National uh, Motor Vehicle Development Plan will go post 2020 to 2035. Yes, in indeed. Thank you for that. And I think there are three key um, areas to respond uh, in terms of the sector and its resilience is the first is liquidity. I think we would have to ensure that sufficient liquidity is, is provided uh, to stimulate these companies in terms of getting back uh, into their modes of operation and to service their, their, their manufacturing requirements. Uh, the second aspect to that, I believe, would be employee well-being. Hmm. Uh, we would have to ensure we understand the, the NICD have indicated uh, that this disease will be around for, for the foreseeable future and we have to ensure that we take care of our employees and observe all of the necessary health protocols as has been advised by government. Uh, that for us is very important and is a not negotiable standard um, that has been adopted. Yeah. The third aspect yeah. to that is to ensure what I would refer to as a, a fast track plan to ensure that we can get back to our manufacturing volumes Pre-COVID, and in fact, the South African Automotive Master Plan is centered around uh, getting our manufacturing ramped up to 1 million units uh, of production. We would have to ensure that we very quickly get to, to that levels, which of course has got the significant multiplier effect. I would just like to, to echo as well that we've got 120,000 people within the automotive sector and a significant multiplier. So this is a sector that has got a huge number of people that derive benefit, yeah. and we have to ensure yeah. that uh, we provide for their livelihoods as well. Let's leave it there for today. That's uh, Lance Schultz, Chief Executive Officer at the Houghton Automotive Industry uh, Development Center, joining us to chat about a key sector for South Africa's manufacturing, without doubt uh, supporting thousands and thousands of jobs, as we heard him say. Thank you for joining us uh, on this program. Until next time, goodbye.